All right. And the bottom right of Acid Plot, Super Tournament Champion, I am World Champion, WCS Global Champion. Give it up for Rogue! And in the top left, hailing from Finland, four-time WCS Champion, GSL versus, G versus the World Champion, the Night King himself, this is Saro! The last time these two players went head to head was actually back at Katowice at that IEM World Championship. Rogue won the entire tournament, but there was one series early on in the group stages that he dropped, and that was to Serral. Serral took him down 2 to 1 in a very close Zerg versus Zerg, and that was the last time they played way back then at the end of February, start of March. So it has been a very close couple of maps they played there, and nothing since then. Oh, what? <laughs> now, this actually, this actually is a little bit weird, but I've had people show this to me, where the, the lava production from three hatcheries actually can get to a point mm. where it ends up being worth it. This means that Rogue's doing something very, very strange here. He's obviously prepared for Serral. Rogue yeah. has been very weird for the last six months or so, Pig, in online cups and on stage he at PSL. So this is something that he's going to try and use to give himself an edge against Serral, and I don't blame him for it. Everyone that's come to try and face the Finnish Phenom here with their regular bag of tricks ends up getting smacked down. Exactly. No one is playing straight up against Serral because he is so fearsome. And we see Rogue here pulling out a specially prepared build order. Now, the idea with that third hatchery is it is, of course, going to be part of a wall off. It's also going to give extra lava production, and he is mining gas behind this. So I would imagine there's going to be a few extra queens coming out for the defense, maybe add an evolution chamber, and almost undoubtedly, I would think it has to be upgraded Zerglings to make use of that lava, going yeah. for something like a plus one melee before link speed even, uh, or a fast carapace. But you know what? There could be some real mind games to this. That's what we've seen everyone try against several time and again, is they try to give off the image of doing one play and they go in a different direction. They want to catch him off guard and unprepared. And that's the real challenge here. Serral once again playing stock standard on his side of the map. He is just going for that third hatchery, building a couple of Zerglings and just poking around for some scouting information. Absolutely, and he feels very safe to take his third hatchery here. This is a round when you want to take your third in a CBC if you feel like you can, but Serral obviously is not too afraid. He knows he has time to get that third up, get the Bailey Nest up because he is, you know, along with you, Pig, expecting a few more links here from Rogue. With a lot of lava production, it's a little bit tough to turn all of that into expensive Ooh. things like Roaches in the early stages. Look at this, actually going to send an Overlord through the main, something you almost never see in Zerg versus Zerg. You'll see in the other matchups. Uh, but Serral says, you know what, you're up to something tricky. I need to get some information. The Overlord pokes in does decide to pull back for now. These Zerglings are going to be looking around. There's a Baneling Nest on the way. And that Evolution Chamber here completing the wall off for Rogue. The Queen there, he says, oh, actually, there's a hole in there. Oh, Serral. This always manages to slip on by for a bit of a cheeky scout. And those Ling's going to run on in here. Yeah. He's going to see everything he needs to see. There is not a Ooh. whole lot, apart from this obvious, you know, elephant in the room, third hatchery at the front, there's not a whole lot of weirdness from Rogue just yet in the um, main. Yeah, he's scouting everywhere. Serral's like, what is going on? But there's a ton of lings that are about to come out for Rogue. He's going to get some pressure on behind it. He's going for that plus one carapace, and I think he'll be following up with probably a big Roachling, maybe just a big Zergling flood. But for now, he's going to start off looking for some pressure. Serral, he's got Zerglings. He's got four Banelings making on the defense. He's got his own evolution chamber going up behind it. It's the standard progression. Serral wants to defend and get a hot ahead in the work account. And these Banelings do finish just in time here for Serral. Rogue with so many links. It's going to come down to Micro here for the Korean Zerg. Serral positioning himself between the natural and the third. He doesn't want to give up either base here. And Rogue just looking for that opening. Both players posturing. The Overlord's making it a little bit tough. Both players have good vision of where each other's armies are. So for now, Rogue just going to reposition his army. You know, with that Carapace and that Roach Warren down, this definitely looks like Rogue could be building towards a big push in the future. He's got his own lair on the way as well. Serral up ahead, a few workers throughout this game. So Serral still always somehow ending up ahead in the economy. He's got his own plus one ranged attack Ooh. on the way. However, the Carapace will somewhat minimize that. Still no lair starting up for Serral just yet. Only now does that kick in. He's looking for some scouting. Great block there by Rogue. That Zergling wanting to deny the information. If you can keep Serral in the dark, possibilities open up. But the moment Serral sees all of your tech, that is where he's going to make the perfect decisions and block you at every turn. Certainly. With plus one Carapace finishing up means that Rogue can also eat a Baneling or two. So both players going to have to rely on Roaches going forward here. There's going to be a bit of an upgrade window Ooh. for Rogue to have the superior army. Serral gets in. He sees the lair. 
Big scalp there for Serral. Yeah, doesn't know the exact timing on it, but he does know it wasn't finished. And uh, that, of course, does give him a bit of comfort, knowing his own lair's about halfway done. These Zerglings poking around, looking for little bits of damage, but they don't really want to overcommit there. Rogue is on point. Serral just takes the small Ling skirmish and then backs out of there before the reinforcements arrive. Great play, as per usual. Rogue here, very strong on the economy game, realizing he's up against a very defensive Serral. Rogue finally taking that worker advantage, and even more drones coming in. Roach speed on the way here for Rogue as well. Not trying any of that tricky muta play that we saw Dark try yesterday. So far, Rogue is just focused on the Roaches, his Lings still creating some pressure on the map as well. Both players powering for that mid game. The Ling stage of the game almost done here. A nice scout there from Rogue as well. He's been having a very lovely early game with that weird third hatchery. And he is just pulling those Lings back. Serral getting Overlord's speed here, which could be pretty nice for him later. He has been, has been known to just use Overlord's all game long and even contaminate to give himself edges. And there's that extra plus one attack, a plus one armor. Zergling eating that failing hit there. And you don't want Rogue had that macro hatch this whole time. He's up a couple of workers throughout. He's adding on his own ranged upgrades and going for a fast fourth base. Yeah, that's got to be the play here. His own Overlord speed on the way as well. Serral already, of course, with that speed overseer we're so used to seeing. Spots the Roach count, sees the saturation on the bases. That is how many workers he's got. So Serral knows they're tied neck and neck in economy. And both players are just going to be playing Roach versus Roach. Neither one deviating. Serral has the upgrade advantage. His plus two well ahead, but he hasn't secured that fourth base location until just a little bit later. Certainly. A little bit of edges for both players here. Serral has been using Roach Burrow tactics to great effect in Zergus Zerg. We'll see if that's his next upgrade here when Roach Speed finishes. Rogue still just being active with these Zerglings. I love that he's still using these Zerglings so much and they're just running around the map looking for openings. Anytime yeah. that there's an opening in Serral's defenses, he's going to definitely utilize it. But so far, Serral's been great. He's going for some drop play here. Not going to use Burrow. Instead, going to go take the air option and drop those roaches into the mineral lines of Rogue. Massive respect here from both players. Neither one has really taken a big gamble in terms of swinging at the other. They're both just defending, poking around, looking for openings. Finally, Serral is going to start moving across the map. He's got that Burrow, that tunneling clause, starting up behind this. His 2-1 upgrades well on the way. He wants to create some pressure, keep scouting. He wants to make sure Rogue doesn't surprise him with any sort of tech switches. Rogue's still so active with those Zerglings on the north side of the map, but otherwise in a defensive stance. Serral now starting to open up the map, but the Overlords see everything for both sides. It's impossible to hide anything from either player here. There's that drop on the right-hand side. A bit of engagement here with Rogue having the numbers. A lot Ooh. more Roaches for him. Serral's army a little piecemeal here, bringing in those links for the body block. They are the meat shield here for these Roaches. Dodging those piles very nicely, but Rogue still with that Roach count. Serral coming in from two Ooh. angles here. He just doesn't have the numbers. Yeah, his plus two isn't quite done. Serral needs to pull Ooh. back the links, jumping on his fourth base. Rogue here catching Serral a little bit out of control. His Roach drop, though, counterattacking in the main base. Takes down the Queen. He's going to start dishing out the hurt on those workers, but Serral has to hang on at home. He's just rallying here. There is a big defender's advantage in CVZ, but he's trying to hold this position. He doesn't want to lose a base here to Rogue's attack. Plus Serral. two. Plus two's kicked in. Serral's got the upgrade advantage, finally. He does indeed, and it's showing here. He's pushing Rogue back. The hatchery still stands on one-third hit points. Rogue deflected here by the reinforcements of Serral. The drop play still getting drone kills. Four have gone down. Serral still with three Roaches alive, and this Overlord Roach needs to keep an eye on them. Great defense there by Serral, stabilizes both players, still very close in economy. But now with that upgrade lead there, it's Rogue who has to go back, kind of just sit back until his upgrades catch up. The plus two range attack upgrade so important. These Roaches just being wow. so annoying. This is what happens when you don't have any Hydras or Muters out. The Overlords are so hard to shut down. We're going to hop into Serral's first person view and watch the master at work, multitasking as best he can. Certainly here, he's just controlling this battle, which is, of course, most of his focus. But meanwhile, getting those Roaches into several mineral lines at once. He's got borrowed Roaches at that fourth base location for Rogue as well. Just dropping them now. But it looks like oh. Rogue's defense is actually all over the place here. Yeah, but he's, going finding, down. he's finding openings. Look at this. Every time the Roaches get there, he just backs away and then looks elsewhere. He's got this drop. He sees this Roaches ready. He pulls it away at home, still standing strong on the defense. This is where Serral shows his skill. It's always this stage where he can hit his opponent in several areas at once. Rogue is not mining in his main base at all. Meanwhile, Serral with four bases fully mining is hitting from all sides. And now he's going to push the front at the same time. Look at that. He doesn't let the Roaches fall. He keeps picking them up and saving them every single time. 
Serral is maxed out, and he's looking to press the issue here. He's wow. just hitting that drawing line again, and he even has the numbers here on the front line to take a fight directly in front, front of Rogue's face. The Biles connecting, 16 drones going down behind this off screen. Serral still pushing this high ground. The reinforcements of Rogue having a concave on the right-hand side, but Serral wins the left-hand side, and he can reinforce here again. The Roach is still doing too much. GG! Serral takes game one here against the reigning world champion, Rogue. It's like watching a master dance around his opponents. The moment he hits those middle stages of the game, Serral's ability to control three, four locations at once is second to none. It is absolutely incredible. Oh, once again, even against Rogue there, you saw he just would not let those roaches go down in that drop. He forced so many units on the defense and he just wasn't able to keep up. Rogue depleted his defenses on the front. Serral found the weak point, pounced on it, and just shut him down in that frontal engagement. I love that opening from Rogue. It made the early game look very threatening there against Serral. But it felt like once it got to the mid game and then an extra hatchery's worth of lava production didn't really matter anymore. When yeah. it got to that Roach headbutt stage, Serral just was extremely comfortable. It was very hard for Rogue to find any kind of edge there. Felt like he was fishing for an overreaction almost, wasn't it? Hey, hey, look at this weird thing I'm doing. I got the hatchery, I've got some Zerglings. But he committed a light amount to it. And I feel against almost any other player, you establish a worker lead from that. But here against Serral, Serral somehow defends this, doesn't overreact, ends up a couple of workers for most of that early game. And in a dead even mid game, it feels like Serral is always the favorite. Yeah, certainly does. I think Rogue had a worker lead for a minute there, but of course, Serral just kept picking those fights, and that multitasking is just muy caliente. And the top left here from Jin Air Green Wings, the reigning world champion. Give it up for Rogue! And in the bottom right, currently up one in the series, it's Esports' Serral! Oh my, that is a 15 hatchery. Goodness gracious. Is Serral maybe gonna go for, oh my, yep, that's a gas. Wow. <laughs> so this build is where you're trying to give off the appearance of I'm expanding and building an economy, but then you get a very fast gas, followed by a spawning pool. You make a whole lot of Zerglings, you hide them in the back of your base, and the moment they get that metabolic boost, that Zergling speed upgrade, you flood across the map. This is something I think a lot of Zerg players out there on the ladder have experienced, but you almost never see this at the top end of StarCraft. It's something Rogue has a very low amount of experience against, no doubt, and Serral here going out with what is a bit of a gamble here in this game. We're gonna have to see if he can hide the information. Can he sell the story? Will the Overlord spot the creep at his expansion and just assume it's a normal opening? Because that's what Serral's hoping. He's hoping Rogue goes for a third base, delays his bane lane nest. If Rogue can lock up his defense, he's gonna be way ahead. As you can see, there's already a nice little worker difference there. Absolutely. Uh, I think this is such a brilliant move here from Serral, where clearly he's prepared for his opponent as well, bringing something a little bit new to the table and the rush distance here on Parasite is so long that you can absolutely get away with an opening yeah. like this. Very clever. That Overlord, by the time it gets there, it can't really tell the difference between a hatch that's about 15 seconds early like this one and a normal hatchery, uh, of course, because the creep spreads had time to spread out quite quickly. So there's no real obvious tells on a big map, but it does slow down your rush getting across the map. Now, there is a second queen for this. Serral does have 16 workers. This isn't like a crazy 13 drone version. Uh, you know, he's still got some economy, but no gas mining behind it. There won't be a Baneling follow-up. He gets those four Zerglings to head out at what appears to be a normal timing. But to give off that see, image of the hatch first. He held those Zerglings back for a moment. And there's a dozen more on the way. So they will start hitting the field here. Speed, two-thirds of the way done here for Serral. Rogue with a very regular opening. Has third a hatch. hold on, but he's going for a third here, misreading this Ooh. opening from Serral. Oh, an Evo Chamber rather than Baneling uh -oh. is going down as well. Uh -oh. This is not what Rogue needs. Now, don't get me wrong. He might still have the numbers, but he's building so many workers right now. And look at this. Serral has sold the story so well. The Zerglings are coming out to defend. The Queen going out into no man's land. Serral almost baiting that out. He's pushed back Rogue's Overlord. Rogue doesn't realize there is a flood 
of Zerglings coming across, and that Queen being out in the open, that's a disaster for Rogue! Strong start here for Serral, the Mind Games, catching this Queen in the Rogue part of town! She gets taken down, and the Natural is next, as Serral looking for that main! He's got to hold the ramp, if Rogue doesn't hold this ramp, he is going to get knocked out of this game! The Drones turning around, desperately fighting, the Queen pulling back, great control by Rogue! Serral relentlessly trying to break through, but I don't know if he can get up there! Oh, it's looking like Rogue might have it here with those extra links coming out of the natural. Serral getting pushed back. Rogue! That queen is so low, but she holds on. He loses a handful of drones, but he was already up in workers anyway. Losing that third hatchery is not the end of the world, as he still has that worker lead. Yeah, and he's got the Baneliness and the Carapace upgrade. The longer this goes, the better it is for Rogue. The Zerglings, though, still looking for an angle, but Rogue getting some bits of damage. He's got to turn around. Serral has the unit advantage. Serral looking for this engagement. It's still non-stop links on the production. Serral is all in. He has to make it work right now, but there's already Banelings on the way. Certainly is. When they start to pop here for Rogue, it gets harder and harder for Serral, who only has Zergling tech oh. and is kind of supply blocked right now as well. Oh. Those Banelings looking for that big connection. Serral control, good enough for now. Trying to break yeah. off some links, picks up one Baneling here, but more where that came from for Rogue. He's going for a big counterattack with his Zerglings here. Serral doesn't have enough to hit it two places at once. Serral realizing if he can get the Banelings down, he can rush in and win this game. But look at the micro from Rogue, just dancing those Banelings, realizing as long as he has them alive, it'll be big. Oh, reinforcement links coming out of those hatcheries for Fresh. The Queen's alive as well, helping out in the battle. Rogue getting on top of that Queen with a bit of service area. Wow. Serral's reinforcements fighting back. Rogue's counterattack. That it looks was like Serral's going to survive for now. Serral's control there. He lured out most of the Zerglings behind the mineral line where they weren't able to find the surface area. Meanwhile, still creating threat on the other side of the map. Right now, Serral is trying to be as wily as he can. He's trying to just work a way back into this game, but he's got so much less stuff than Rogue. The Banelings are such a threat, and that Carapace up Upgrade. It's getting closer and closer to finished. That is a big advantage here for Rogue when that gets finished. And also without Baneling Tech, Cyril has a little while to wait before he can get those Banelings up for himself here. Rogue still pressing the issue. Another current attack from Serral. Not that many links here from Rogue, but a Baneling is about to finish. That Baneling, it gets oh. up, but good dodge there by Serral. He's going to dive on into the main base. At home, he's got a good defense as well, but the Baneling is oh. there. Serral pulling back at the last second. That's still three. Wow. Rogue's micro is impeccable. Nice control there from Rogue. Serral losing a handful of links here. Still a Baneling alive in the main. Gets about a handful of links there, but Serral just doesn't have enough. Rogue cracks these defenses. Defense on the other side of the and ties up the score. What a piece. No 3-0 in this semi-final pick. Zero emotional response there from Rogue. Just a tight control defense. And he knows he's got to block strategies like that if he's going to take Serral down. He ties it up one-to-one. -one. Serral went for the gamble, went for the attack. It started well. But Rogue's defense's scramble was good. That hold on the ramp just barely keeping him in there. And once the Banelings were out, the upgrades were on the way. Once he stabilized, Rogue held onto that advantage very well, showing the caliber of player that he is. That's right. So both players very evenly matched here, and I'm loving it. We're going to have an incredibly exciting series here. Serral getting focused and ready for the next game here. Game three just moments away. I'm so happy both players have prepared something a little bit different here. You don't always see Serral, who's just so confident at playing a regular quote-unquote mm. CDZ. He comes in there and goes, I'm going to go for a big mind game Ling Flood and just try and win straight up. Both players taking each other extremely seriously, as you'd expect, at the biggest tournament in StarCraft II for the year. Yep, you know, Serral doesn't necessarily tend towards these sort of builds, but in the last year he's learnt that his predictability was a weakness, and every best of five series he will mix in something like this, something that's very aggressive, very uncharacteristic of his normal play, but I wholly expect him to go back to his stock standard after this because it served him so well so far in this tournament. And speaking of players who really bring it when it matters, and the bottom left here from Junior Green Wings winning map two. This is Rogue! In the top right, seeing if he can get that map advantage. This is NC Sports' is Serral! We're going to be going into Cerulean Fall. This is a map which Serral showed an incredibly patient play 
against Dark yesterday. He slowly wore him down. And if you speak to a lot of the pro gamers that practice and compete against Serral, the Zerg players will say, if he gets to that middle stage, he wears you down. He doesn't need to get ahead in the early game because it will be a lot of small little maneuvers that he's going to use to just slowly gain better trades. And there's something that I think it was Lambo who said, he feels like the real magic with Serral is he just will pull back every time it's a bad fight. His ability to judge an engagement that's good, that's bad, and dance in and out of these situations, and then instantly commit 100% when he knows it's the right fight, that's the thing that's made him so scary. On the other hand, I feel like Rogue has a lot more strategic depth, a lot more mind games and weird plays he can bring out here. Extremely intelligent Zerg. I would say the greatest Zerg in Korea currently, facing the greatest Zerg in the outside world, I suppose. The outside of Korea. I think the, the winner of this match gets the, the best Zerg world in the title, undisputed. So. And the next series after that today, the Grand Finals, that's where you get the world champion title, and that's where no one can, uh, can say anything disparaging about your skill level. For both of these guys, there's a lot on the line here, and it seems like for now, pretty standard openings. Yeah. But uh, is, of course, going to be a rogue there with that faster Zergling speed and uh, going for that. Well, it just seems like uh, both players are going for a little bit of a regular opening here. Going to try and flex their mid-game muscles. We haven't seen a Bailey Ness from either player just yet. Just drones here from Serral, a few more links from Rogue. But looks like those links might just be to try and defend this faster third hatchery that he's going for. Whereas Serral's just happy to power on two bases for now. Mm, okay, Rogue's being a little oh, bit tricky we now. We do see that third going down to the pretty normal timing, but this time it's Rogue trying to sell his story. Zergling starting to bank up in the main base here for Rogue. More and more Zerglings uh. on the way with that faster Ling speed. So Rogue just down at only 18 workers here. Queen's at the front as well, trying to deny scouting. Serral, he's only just started this Baneling Ness, yet that Ling speed getting very close. Serral's going to need to have the very quick response this time. And with this sort of maneuver from Rogue, I mean, he's definitely going to go for the natural. He wants to do big damage. But even just getting the third base might be enough to bounce back off that. So Serral's going to be moving out with some Lings. He's hunting for some information. And with those Queens pushing back the Overlords, that Ling speed, it's only 10 seconds from finishing. Serral's going to need to react very quickly when he sees this moving out. And right now, he doesn't have that much vision in the middle. The Overlord's being pushed to the left. Oh, he's trying to hide it. Serral's going to spot it at the last second, but Rogue, ignoring the Zerglings, he's going to dive straight across the map. Serral desperately scrambling his defenses here, getting a couple of Evo Chambers and a Queen in the wall. He starts four Banelings here in the natural. He's definitely going to take damage. The question is how much. Cancels that third immediately and concentrating his defensive efforts here on that natural. Snap cancel on the third to get this wall down so quickly. That was incredible. It's not going to hold forever, but it buys enough time for the Banelings. Great defense so far. Rogue still has a very scary Zergling Ooh. down though. Only two Banelings left here. Serral's got to keep them alive. If those Banelings go down, that's where Rogue can jump in but for now it's been held the hatchery did get cancelled but Serral saved the money he's gonna look to re-expand now and look at the worker lead Serral with a flawless defense very incredibly tight clutch hold there from Serral he's gonna try and get a third up Rogue is aware of it he sees that with the overlord Serral's gonna bring some of these units up here to defend pulls those links back waiting for the Banelings to help him out here that third is very low at hit points Rogue Ooh. dives and forces another cancel nice pick off there as he has his third back at home Rogue droning on the other side of the map, but Serral actually has uh, this Baneling tech that's very, very threatening to Rogue if he wants to go across the map. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Serral's going to counterattack and force a lot more Lings out from Rogue. That's a nice move here by Serral, sneaking a few Banelings off the right-hand side, but the flank comes in from behind. Serral going to have to evacuate for now. More drones in the production tab, and already Serral in the midst of the Ling Bane Wars. How does he always find a way to get that plus one range on the way? I do not know, but here we go. Rogue actually winning these skirmishes. Serral losing a few extra Zerglings there. Looks like Rogue just has way more Zerglings on the field. Baneling Nest of his own finishing up here. There's one Baneling looking for the connection. Whoa! Massive connection! There goes that army advantage that Rogue had. Serral looking to try and capitalize on that nice connection there. Going for the third base, bringing another Baneling in. Rogue losing another plus for his Zerglings to the Baneling of Serral. But Serral still doesn't have the numbers to try and do any serious damage here. Yeah, but he's way ahead on economy behind this and he's keeping the pressure up. He's going to rotate and hit the natural. Is there even anything over there? I don't even know. Both sides counterattacking hard right now. These Banelings looking for the worker line, and they're gonna find it. Four workers go down, back on Serral's side. The Queen wow. with a solid focus fire. Rogue unable to get damage. He's gonna go to the third. He's looking for the snipe. The Banelings zoning him out. 
a broken snipe, that third, that's going to get him a bit of time in this game. But right now, Serral has a huge advantage. He snipes the Baneling, and he's looking to save that hatch. More Banelings coming in for those Queens. They're looking to try and save that hatchery, like you said. This Baneling going for that big cluster of Zerglings. Rogue's micro, very, very nice here. He's surrounding those Queens, but they transfuse oh, each other to stay alive. Oh, 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 Rogue reinforces his position. Serral with so many units. These Queens helping out so much in the defense as well. And now the Roaches are out. Serral, the defense holds here. The third is still up. Does and Rogue is deflected. Does he have a third hand? How is he oh going my to God. in the middle of this? He's up 10 workers. Somehow he's got plus one Roaches on the map. He's defended that with zero worker losses while inflicting damage on the other side of the map. Serral is a player unlike one we've ever seen before. I don't know how he manages these situations so well. This doesn't seem possible or fair, but it's happening. Serral, such a strong game so far, but Rogue not out of it yet. He's such a brilliant player, and he's got his own Roach War on the way here. Getting that drone count up here. He's going to take a drone lead very, very shortly, but Serral has the tech advantage. He's already got plus one. He's got a Roach War, and he has a Lair on the way, and he's droning up behind us to retake that worker lead. Every advantage in the Finnish player's hands right now. Right now, Rogue has to dig deep, and he needs to find some sort of strategic edge, a gamble. He can't just play straight up. He's been trailing in the work account. He's down in overall army. He doesn't have the same upgrades. He needs to somehow, first of all, hang on against this very light Roach pressure. This is more of a fake from Serral than anything. Looking to scout, maybe force a bit of a reaction. You can see here, Rogue's a bit worried looking around, but the Roaches of Serral just turn around and go home. Rogue spots that. Pulls back his overlords from the Queens. He's looking around right now, and he's trying to kind of gain some presence on the map with this big amount of Zerglings. Yet once again, another cheeky ambush baneling on the high ground there from Serral. And it looks like Rogue's choice here is no lair, no evolution chamber, just mass roaches, Zerglings, and banelings. But there we go. Zerglings come in. They see no drones on the third base. And Rogue knows he's being spotted. He feels like he might have to pull the trigger here. For now, he's scouting around, trying to check the economy of Serral. He sees a fully mining third base. And Rogue knows just how far behind he is in the economy. He's going to have to push right now and try to close out this game. And that third is the lair. So there is a ticking clock here on Rogue's strategy. If he doesn't end this game in the next couple of minutes, it's going to be all Serral. Rogue going across the map. He has a slight army supply advantage. But keep in mind that there is the defender's advantage for Serral. And that plus one attack oh. upgrade. <laughs> And he's making so many Banelings. Rogue doesn't even bother. Serral takes the map advantage. And we find ourselves with the WCS champion, the four-time WCS champion, on match point. It felt like Rogue was able to raise Serral's blood pressure a little bit in that game. Yet at the end of the skirmish is going on on both sides of the map. It was definitely Serral who came out on top. Both players have been able to block each other's very aggressive plays here. Neither one finding any purchase in that early game by committing to the aggression. And of course, Serral now leading two to one. He won the mid to late game battle. They're gonna go into map number four in a moment. And we're gonna have to see what strategies come out from both players. Just one more map to go through to that grand finals. That's all right, Serral and Rogue still with more tricks in their utility belt, I'm sure. But uh, before we get into map four, guys, we're going to take a short break. Don't go away, as when we return, the semi-final between Rogue and Serral will continue.
The 2018 StarCraft II World Championship Series Global Finals are brought to you in part by Republic of Gamers, Corsair, T-Mobile, Samsung SSD, and NVIDIA. Welcome back, StarCraft fans. If you're watching from home or you're here in the convention center, we love you and the games have been so sick. Hope you guys have been enjoying yourselves. Map four, not far away here in this semi-final. Yeah, we are getting deep in this Zerg versus Zerg match. And both players are scratching their heads about how to solve the opponent in the opposing booth. We've seen some cheeky plays come out on both sides. But here, as it gets down closer and closer to that potential match point, it is looking like the players might settle down. We might see some more straight up play against each other. Of course, this young man here is the one who's been capturing our minds and our imaginations over the course of the last few weeks and, of course, the entire year. Facing off against him is the Korean Beast, the reigning champion from last year, who is showing he has still got what it's, it takes. He's been smashing his way through the tournament to this phase, but the Finnish player still stands in his way. Rogue is the best Zerg in Korea. He's the only one to make Serral bleed in this tournament so far. And he'll need to get another couple wins here to move on through. In the bottom left, from Chida Green Wings, everyone make some noise for the reigning world champion. This is Rogue. But in the top right, on match point, the Night King himself makes some noise for NC Sports' Zero! Just like the Night King, he's starting to look so unstoppable. He's just marching his way through these brackets so far. Finally, of course, dropping that one map to Rogue earlier after his rush failed. Serral here going back to the more standard hatchery first play. He's going to be working his way into that standard game he loves so much. And the big question mark is where is Rogue's confidence level? Where does he want to take this game himself? Is he going to throw another curveball? Is he going to try some of the cheeky mutilist play? The one thing I was thinking going into this series is what, what did we see from Serral? We saw a lot of Roach into mutilist play. Mm -hmm. We didn't see any straight into muters off the back of Ling Bane. And I think that sort of play out of Rogue here, especially on a big map like this, that could be amazing against Serral. Serral's so Roach focused. If you get those muters, you get a lot of map vision, you deny your opponent's vision, you can harass, force a lot of anti-air, and then tech switch every which way from there. So I would love to see Rogue change it up, bring out either an upgraded Zergling play or the fast mutilist play, something to use some mobility, because I feel like going head to head in a Roach War versus Serral is just so hard to break him. It seems like something else has to be the answer. I completely agree with you there, Pig. If you guys cast your mind back to the round of eight, if you managed to catch the VODs or see it live, Serral played Dark on this map and went for a very peculiar strategy, going for a lot of upgraded Zerglings. Mm. Not really any Banelings, just Zerglings into Mutalisks. And Dark also countered with a very weird style, just Roach Corruptor. But it seemed like even that, which were the units that were supposed to counter the other units, didn't get it done. It was so close as well, wasn't it? It looked like this weird push we'd never really seen before, and it almost broke through, but Serral, I mean, he's, he's so good at just surviving those punches, and he can definitely take a beating. And uh, he ended up surviving that game and, of course, pushing that series through to a very decisive victory. And he now is here going for the standard third base timing. Both of them are doing so. A nicely timed Bailey Nest from both players. And this is about as standard as it gets. They're going to use a few defensive banelings to zone out any big swathes of zerglings coming in, poking around and looking for the scouting. And in this sort of setup, you can absolutely go muters uh, as rogue. It's obviously a little bit more exposed against some of the ground-based roach pushes that Serral does favor. But the real battle is going to be about information. What we need to look at is it's unlikely either of them just builds non-stop zerglings and tries to, to win. 
they're both too good to fall to that. But what we're going to see is both players trying to run Zerglings in circles around the opponent's base, gaining as much information as possible. Because if you can figure out the direction your opponent's taking, you can figure out how to get one step ahead of them. So Rogue is going to have to pay a lot of attention to stopping Serral seeing everything on the map. If you let Serral see what's going on, he's going to counter it. He's going to get ahead in workers. He's going to survive. And once he gets to the mid to late game, he is unstoppable. Certainly seems that way. Just such a mirrored game here from both players. Defensive banelings going up near the player, getting aggressive. Both players just happy to chill and defend that third base and get up into the mid game. Evo Chambers, nicely timed. Third base is on two and a half minutes. Banelink, similar in count here as well. Rogue looking for that scout. Serral denies it. He's just like, yes, have a look at my third hatchery. That's fine, but please leave. Nice quick lair on the way here for Serral, as well as, of course, that uh, evolution chamber. Very curious to see what upgrade does queue up. It looks like just a plus one range. And indeed, it is going to be that for Serral. It's going to be the Roach Warren, the plus one range. And Rogue on the other side, confidently going into his own plus one ranged upgrade. That tells us he wants to play Roach versus Roach. Rogue is not afraid of Serral. He's not going to shy away from him. As much as we've been respecting Serral's late game play, Rogue is ready to take it to him there. And I believe in Rogue's ability to do it. Like, yes, Serral has been showing us win after win here, but Rogue is so good at this composition as well. Artos has mentioned on the couch, he loves actually playing the Lurker game as well. Very EU Zerg style. A scout there from Serral once again. Just always seems to sneak that 007 James Bond Zergling into the main. And he does, of course, confirm there wasn't all the gases taken. The lair wasn't finished. He knows there's no threat of fast mutalisks. But once again, both players following up with Overlord speed. Neither one of them trying to cut corners and gamble and take risks. They want to see everything that's going on on this map. And a very quick fourth base attempt. Serral already moving this drone out. Both players tied pretty much neck and neck in the work account. They've been going back and forth on who has a lead of just one or two workers. But all things considered, this is about as mirrored as a mirror match can get. They're both going for roach upgrades. They're both going for a lot of economy. They both look like they're going to be heading for a quick fourth base in the near future. The only difference now, a second evolution chamber from Rogue. Looks like he wants to get the double upgrades on the way. Which could actually amount to a big advantage for Rogue here the more time he has. Double upgrades, huge here in the mirror matchup. Just a single uh, Evo for now for Serral. Just starts that second one as well. So there is going to be a bit of an advantage for Rogue. Serral sees that with the Overseer. Doesn't quite have enough for a Contaminator or anything like that. So just scouting here. Macro hatch on the way there for Rogue in the main base. Something where, uh, you know, just going to make sure he always has an abundance of lava to remax on those roaches if needed. But the quicker fourth base there for Serral as well. We've got two Dropper Lords on the way here for Rogue uh. and one for Serral. Both <laughs> players doing the exact same thing. And even Serral's out of the second evolution chamber. They're both doing the exact same thing. We are just going to see who is better at it. Who can harass with those roach drops better? Who can engage with the roach ravager on the front more, uh, more cleanly? Who can take the more efficient trades? And this is going to be fascinating. There's actually yeah, a second Dropper Lord does load up there. One's going to go down the north, one down the south. It looks like Banelings in both of them for Rogue. Nice. Looks like he wants to hit those Mineral Lions. He's got Roaches in the one here to the north, and Serral, has he, broke, has he broken off that Dropper Lord here to the south here? I was, I've lost track of it, unfortunately. Ooh, Lings on the south side, there it is. Serral still poking as well. Yep, yeah, this Baneling drop going to come in, but Rogue reacting very quickly. He's going to shut that down. And both players dancing back and forward. Serral up in the army supply right now. He's going for a lot of roaches and ravages. Hasn't started investing in tunneling claws and burrow just yet. Rogue's going to go for those a little bit quicker. Both players dancing around. So much respect Dude. between these two Zergs. Neither one trying to finish this early. They both want to go up to the late game, and they both want to fight in a big engagement. They want to take each other on head to head. No one trying to force the issue until they're both ready. Comes the uh, Dropper Lord here from the south from Rogue, looking oh. for that drone line. There's no Serral. Overlord spotting over here. He has no idea about yeah. it. That could get a lot of kills. Oh, and this Roach one's spotted. Gonna, that's going to distract in the main. Ooh, and there we go. Spore on the left-hand side, zoned out the Baneling drop of Serral. Queen's in position in the main base as well as four Roaches. Serral, very well split up, but here we go on the south side. Oh, nice response there by Serral. Pulls the drones away, doesn't lose anything. He's still looking for damage on his side of the map as well. This Baneling drop going to come in, but the Queens are going to find it, and that's going to get shut down. Both players not finding any damage. Rogue up six workers Whoa. right now, teching into lurkers. It's actually Rogue who's going into lurkers a lot quicker in this game. Serral a bit behind on the tech right now. 
Certainly is. And for all you guys watching from home and here in the convention center, just look at that minimap. It is non-stop movement from both players. It's almost like campaign, like two computers are controlling the Zerg units here. They're just non-stop. Tunnel Big... Claws is finished now. Oh, yes. We see that Tunnel Claws there for Rogue. Actually gets Ooh. under the Roaches here of Serral. And he's going to start hitting those drone lines. Serral needs to split up his army. He had a big push going through the map that's pulling all the way back. Yeah, and that's really bad for Serral. Serral doesn't even have his Lurker Den started yet. Rogue here, it looks like he's the one who's establishing some advantages. Takes out a few workers, creates some problems by dropping these borrowed roaches in the back of the base. Serral gonna have to devote a lot of time to cleaning that up. Meanwhile, Rogue pushing through the center. Just wants to create pressure, look for little bits of damage. He doesn't want to overcommit. Rogue has a massive income and better tech behind it. He just wants to look for small, favorable trades, and that's what he's doing. He creates threat at the front, and that allows the roaches to unburrow in the back. Serral losing more workers. This is something that Serral's been doing against so many Zergs here for so long. And Rogue doing it just as effectively here. Getting more and more drone kills at the middle lines of Serral. He's down 20 workers here. These Roaches get caught, but still Rogue finding so much damage. Yeah, I mean, this is... Rogue doesn't mind losing Roaches here or there. He's got a hive on the way. The Lurkadens are almost finished. Plus two Carapace on the way as well. Getting ahead in the upgrades. Only now does Serral's Lurkaden begin. So this does create a big window where there's going to be much faster Lurkers and also much faster adaptive talent upgrades on Rogue's side of the map. But Serral here just poking around, splitting his army up. A lot of his army's actually pushing on the north side. Serral here with a ballsy maneuver. Rogue not going to risk the base trade. Pulls home to try to defend this. Drop a Lord he prepared earlier. It's been chilling over creep for so long. Just now getting back into the fray. And there is also a hive on the way for Serral. Scouted here by Rogue with his still alive burrowed Roach. Serral looking for an angle here. Uh, and Rogue's just been all over him. Overlord scouting, keeping him in the know. Uh, Serral cleans up some of Rogue's creep. No creep spread at all for Serral, funnily enough, the other side of the map. Bit of the difference here between both players. Fast attack advantage for the Korean Zerg. Seems to be one of the only Zergs in the whole world happy to take Serral to the late game. Yeah, those Lurkers are almost ready now. Serral's going to start looking, of oh. course, for an edge with the Tunneling Claw Roaches going in towards the third base. But they get caught. There we go. Rogue's all over it. Serral's Roaches actually going to slide through because Whoa. they're in the front at the same time. Serral catches the Ravages in the open, snipes a whole bunch of them, pulls out a range of the Lurkers, and Serral once again finds a great engagement at the same time, uses this distraction, slips the Roaches into the main. Rogue is in trouble. Amazing quick maneuver there from Serral, giving himself the advantage in this game. Picks up the hatchery down the south here, knocking Rogue down to four bases. Serral has a fifth back on the other side of the map. His bow and Roaches are still in the main, causing problems. And his army winning a fight here on the high ground as well. The fourth of Rogue still in trouble if Serral wants to commit again. Oh, even losing some Ravages as he goes in to clean this up. What oh. a good trade there for Rogue. Serral there finds an edge, and this is buying him the time he needs. His own Adaptive Talons is on the way. He's adding these extra Tier 3 upgrades, but Rogue there, always the clever player, is starting a Nidus Worm. He's going to try and send Lurkers into the main base of Serral and backstab him. Big catch here from Serral, finding the, the Burrowed Roaches here of Rogue, looking for wow. a quick snipe, and he's going to follow them all the way here. No way for them to run or hide. Ooh. That's a big catch. That was a Oh, oh no! Roaches. Oh no! It's a trap! There's no way out of here, Maynard! Those roaches frantically trying to get out of there, but the lurkers are gonna say, nah! -uh. And those roaches will be going down. Rogue taking the worst end of his last few trades. Serral defending the roaches on the top at the same time. And every single roach gets shut down there. Great defense by Serral. Nidus Worm in the main, though. Has he spotted it? I don't think the finish plan has spotted it. There's so much going on. And if you get lurkers in their main base above their ramp, that can be so hard to clean up. This could be it for Rogue. Let's see if it pays off. Serral sees it. He's pulling his army oh, back. A changeling, changeling holding there's his army out. In the wall. Oh, Serral just realizes it now. Giving Rogue precious few seconds. Burrowing a bunch of lurkers there on top of that ramp. Wow. Serral powers on through, though, the with a lot of points of files. The splash damage from Rogue is huge on that ramp. Wow. But Serral landed some impressive files. Gets his own lurkers burrowed in the ground. He does have detection. Does he have enough? I think he might just barely clear up the last of the Lurkers. And Serral manages to hang on. He loses his Lurker counter-attack on the other side of the map, though. Both players trading punches like crazy. 
30. One more Hydralisks on the way here for the finish, Zerg. Using those Lurkers to get the rest of these Roaches there to get rid of that Nidus Worm as well. He needs to clean up the main base here. He loses a few workers, but in the end, both players very similar. Worker supply, Serral with a lot more army. He's maxed out and looking to punish Rogue for his transgressions. And already Viper's on the way. Remember that fifth base for Serral has been mining gas this entire time. Gas is the important resource in this late game because it's Vipers that actually take down the Lurkers. And right now, Rogue can't afford any. He's even supply blocked on top of that. The Hydras of Serral moving on through it, taking Overlords with them. A borrowed play here, but Rogue with the Spore Crawlers offering detection here. He's all over this attack. The main attack of Serral, though, is moving down the south end of the map here of Lost and Found. He's looking to try and get those Lurkers in a nice position. And Rogue is doing a good job at keeping him honest, though. Plus three Carapace on the way here for Serral. Rogue still has that advantage. Once again, using Borrowed Roaches to try and sneak through the infrastructure of Serral to try and get some harassment done. Oh. The Overseer here of Serral Patrol, though, does catch this Borrowed movement. Serral's going to catch him here. Yeah, great preparation. Rogue's still going to dive for it. Might be a little bit overly ambitious as those Lurkers and Hydras jump on top of it. Nice snipe for one of the Lurkers. He's going to split into two of the bases, but this is a good reactive split from Serral. He's pursuing them. The Roaches Ooh. getting into the main and natural actually doing some nice damage there rogue here creating some problems finally putting serral on the back foot here really just dancing around and serral is struggling to clean this up right now rogue doing a fantastic job of course we can see rogue there trying to keep those roaches alive look at the speed with which he's doing it it seems like most of his roaches have been cleaned up he's got lurkers though everywhere on the defense he's finally established his fifth he says okay i've got the upgrades i've got the walls of Spore crawlers. I've got the five bases up. Let's just sit down and calm down. What he doesn't know about necessarily, though, is that Viper count on Serral's side of the map, and that's the scary part. The Vipers could ruin Rogue's plans here. There's a lot more tier three tech here for Serral. And of course, Spire play generally ends up happening later in the game if both players can't crack the defenses. Nice lurkers here for Rogue and catch some of these roaches. Another Nidus attempt in the main base. Ooh, I like these plays here. A lot of Serral's army out of the map. He's having to bring Ah, uh, he's home. on this one. Okay, yeah, those lurkers there should be able to shut this down. I think he's actually gonna try and bait the units from evacuating there out of the Nidus. And uh, it looks like that one will be going down. At the same time, skirmishes all over the map. Little squads of changelings trying to provide vision for both sides, but they're constantly on top of manually targeting down those units, which are, of course, imposters trying to pretend they're part of the army and just follow along, provide vision. We've got a is, lot of units on the north side there for Serral. Is Serral getting a second hive? Yeah, that he is. I think he was worried about the main base dying to a Nidus Worm earlier. So I saw him upgrading that into a lair before as well. So I don't think it's a mistake. I think it's preparation in case his main goes down and he can't build Vipers. That's so actually a bit of insurance. Not something you see every day there. Nice play there from Serral. The Overseer here of Rogue keeping an eye on the uh, on the mineral lines here, Ooh. seeing that saturation. A Lurker drop here from Rogue, looking to get inside that mineral line. Could be a lot of dead drones on Serral's horizon if he succeeds to get in there. Oh, this is so cool. Rogue is just looking for the big plays. You know, Serral's doing a lot of small backstabs with Roaches, but Rogue is looking for the Nidus Worms. There we go, another one going in the main. At the same time, Lurker drop might be poking in. Yeah, I think he's going to use that distraction, and he's going to look to try and do some big damage on this base. The Lurkers uh, drop on out of there. They burrow. That's fine is going to disappear, as are a handful of drones. Meanwhile, the main base is defended. Serral posturing at the front. Uh, Ducks finally coming in and gaining a little bit of value. Two lurkers pulled to their doom. It seems like both players going back and forth. The bank building up. Right now, I think Serral's lead is in that gas bank. But we see this drop doing some good damage. The lurker, Den, is going to be falling over there. Uh, looks like Rogue actually going for another one-two punch here. If yeah. it doesn't work on one side, it can always utilize the other. Ooh. Oh, and an attack here on the hatchery in the low ground as well. Yeah, Serral not in position. That's gone. Serral's going to have to give that one up. Doesn't want to force his way down there. The Lurkers are just going to siege up defensively. Roach is still posturing on all sides. Just the threat of these Nidus Worms is such a pain <laughs> to deal with. No detection there for Serral. So his Lurker can't defend, has to send some other units back. But he at the same time is trying to poke with some Roaches across the map. This is just raw mechanics versus mechanics. Who has the best skill? Who can try to control so many situations better? And it seems like no one's going to get one big finishing blow maneuver. They're just going to pick away at each other and see who gets the most value over time. Great defense there by Rogue. I'd love to see that unit's lost tab at some point in the near future here because I feel like it's quite close, but my... Whoa, is apparently not. <laughs> 3,000 gas, 4,000 minerals, more efficient from Serral. 
and you can see it in his improved gas bank. That's the more important resource here. Serral's actually also playing with a lot less workers, so Rogue is okay to be inefficient because he's mining more in the short game, but in the long term, his bases will mine out, his gas will mine out. So if the game goes long enough, Rogue may exhaust his resources a lot sooner than Serral. Switching into Serral's first person can here, using Locust to defend, not unlike Rogue. That little Roach run by, very, very cheap for Rogue to just send in a small group of ro Roaches and get some drone kills. But of course, as we mentioned, Serral, once more army supply, does not really care about a giant drone count at this point because he has that bank already. Picking off some changelings of Rogue, sneaky, sneaky changelings, and also attacking this hatchery being seemingly everywhere at once. I feel like any player other than Serral would be so stressed out by those constant Nidus Worms, but he just seems to be taking it in stride. And here we go, the Abducts! He's going to abduct the Lurk as a Blinding Cloud goes down first. The Hydra's going, but he's afraid of the enemy Abducts as well. The oh. Abducts yanking each other to the other side. The Hydra's starting to focus them down. Good reactive Blinding Cloud. Serral! Wow! Moves. Gets the last couple of Vipers there, and Serral's Vipers are still alive. He can continue to press the issue here. More Abducts picking off some of those Lurkers. And there are more Vipers coming out for both players. Serral still basically maxed out here, but doesn't want to press the issue. Still happy to be patient. That was so sick. He actually saw two of his Vipers got abducted, and he instantly blinding clouded all the Hydras, managing to get both of his Vipers back to safety. Only these guys at this level of play are able to react that quickly, keeping those Vipers alive for another day. And more and more trades on the south side of the map as the players look for the advantages. It's all about the Vipers. That's what is going to have the range to just pull units out of that Lurker Siege, pull them into your army and take them down. Rogue, though, still continuing to deny bases on the north. Rogue is playing this sort of less efficient, overwhelming style. He wants to drown Serral, but I, be, I feel like Serral's efficiency is just too good. I don't think this is going to work for Rogue unless he finds some better trades. Yes, Rogue has more bases than Serral right now, but look at the bank. It doesn't seem to be making a difference. Right, there is a finite amount of resources here on the map, and these Nidus Worms aren't free either, Pig, so even though it seems like chump change considering his bank, eventually it all stacks up, especially when both, places are, both players are just playing that extreme late game and just happy to play this one out for the long, long drawn out game. We talked about it at the start of this series. If you go to the late game against Serral, he has a magical ability to take small, efficient trades over and over again. And eventually, you find yourself many thousands of resources behind. Oh, but Rogue wow. had something to say about this base in the north side. He jumps in, snipes three Lurkers, pulls back. Great micro there from Rogue, realizing those Lurkers didn't have the support they needed. This Nidus gets up. Serral bringing in some of those roaches. This Nidus isn't even uh, loaded up here. He's just pulling the <laughs> units of Serral out of position. They've been so well defended so consistently. At this point, it's just a distraction. Oh, nice. But uh, these Lurkers finding angles on the bases. That's Serral's only sixth base. He's mining out a little bit on his fifth. His fourth and third already very dry. This is really cool multitasking from Rogue. And I mean, he's still got a good bank. We keep talking about Serral's overwhelming efficiency. Well, guess what? Rogue's mining so much money, that's not going to come into play for another 10 or 15 minutes in this game. Serral is going to have to really weather the storm if he wants to hold on against Rogue's gigantic economy. Full energy Vipers here. Rogue looking to come across the map with a big army. He hasn't done this, I feel like, in 15 minutes, but he's coming up now. So many Hydras here from Serral, but a nice position here on these Lurkers. It's so tough for Serral to engage this position. He needs those blinding clouds. Oh, and he uses it to actually get some Lurkers on the north side at the same time. There's not a lot of support down here, and these Lurkers are quite clumped, so perhaps Serral could blinding cloud and pounce on it, but it's a very scary engagement to go into. Hydras reacting on the north side are going to try and dodge those Lurker Spines and clear that out Ooh. at the same time. If both players dancing back and forward. Some abducts come in. The Lurkers get pulled out of Blinding Cloud as well. Serral takes down about six of the Lurkers there. Rogue's position on the map getting very dicey. He's counterattacking on the other side of the map as well. Being down almost 30 workers, not a big deal here for Serral as his army is still superior. And with this counterattack, does he get that hatchery? Just barely not here. The reinforcements of Rogue pushing him back for now. Rogue here, he's still holding this position, being annoying, but I don't think annoying is enough. Abducts come down, the splash damage. Ooh, actually, there's still three Lurkers there. And Rogue maintaining this position, his Hydra's abandoning it. They're going to dive south, Ooh. take out the rally and the hatchery. More and more of Serral's workers are going down. This is turning into a problem now. He still does not have a sixth base up. He's lost one of those expansions. Rogue has still got this top left base and the one in the bottom center. Rogue has got a lot more mining. He's got a healthier work account and he's still maxed out. Both players still with huge banks, but we're getting to that point where if Rogue loses one big army, he's not gonna be able to replace it with only 2,000 gas. Serral, with about 5,000 gas in the bank, has one remax, 
before he's going to be uh, knocked out of money. Oh, the Vipers here getting a few Hydra shots. He gets a couple of those lurkers on the bottom end, but Rogue is going to lose some of his own here on the high ground. Counter-attacking yeah. with a lot of Hydralists. They eat a lot Ooh. of lurkers spines, but he has so much more where oh, that came from. Rogue, Rogue. the blinding cloud. Finally, it goes down. And it does force those Lurkers to pull back, but already takes a lot of splash damage. More Lurkers coming in from that side as well. Rogue stressing Serral. We're finally seeing Serral on the back foot, but no, even when he's getting pressed on all sides, Serral is able to defend and hang on, sniping down the Overseers with the Revenge. He manages to supply block Rogue once more. Rogue being forced to build Overlords. Serral hangs on to that base in the top center, and that is so important. He's going to punish as well in the top left. Rogue still trying to attack from all sides, trying to over overwhelm Serral, but Serral's efficiency over time is paying off. Look at the gas banks. He's up 3,000 gas in the bank. He's wearing Rogue down slowly over time. Serral is not being broken. Another supply block here for Rogue. Still more overlords in the production tab. And Rogue is looking to try and counterattack, but Serral already has an army moving to meet him here. The Changeling's also giving him a bit of a vision. The high ground advantage and the Viper advantage is Serral's. Rogue has sub 1,000 gas right now, and if he's stuck picking circles at this point in the game, that is not going to be good. He's Two got... Vipers Whoa. versus six, 11 Lurkers versus 10. Looks like Serral has the better army at the moment. Yeah, this is what we saw happen later on in that game versus Dark yesterday. It hit a point where, yeah, Dark was maxed, but none of the Vipers and Lurkers were left. And when you don't have a good Viper Lurk account, things can get very troublesome. And uh, a lot of layers going up all over the map here for Serral, <laughs> trying to rebuild those Hydras here. And Roach is trying to create some threat. Rogue still trying the Lurker drops, but none of them has really got that huge payoff damage he's been looking for. Serral still on a very small economy, though. Only about 40 workers, but that means he's got more army to work with. Rogue going to try and expand to the entire bottom right-hand side of the map. If he loses that side of the map, he's definitely out of this game. Serral's still got a huge bank to work with, and he's starting to posture forward. He's looking for the Abducts. Big Abducts from both players here. Blinding Clouds again to keep those Vipers alive. Loses a couple of them. Another big grab there from Rogue, but the Blinding Cloud's still coming in clutch for the finish, Zerg. And he's defending on the other side of the map as well. Oh, the Spore shot down the Lurker drop. The Lurkers killed the Lurkers as they unloaded on the north side. Lurkers kind of running past each other. <laughs> <laughs> Not something you see every day. Serral's going to turn around and try to come back. There's no detection there for Rogue, so Serral should be winning that engagement. Rogue's going to try and get out of there, but once again, Serral wraps around, and five more lurkers go down. Rogue cannot afford these losses. He is broke. He can't remax the economy. It has been ahead all game long for Rogue. He's been throwing wave after wave at the Finnish player, but he's been standing like a rock. The Finnish Phenom, the Night King, here has weathered it. He's up to 4k gas in the bank, 6k minerals. Serral has held on. He's still got that base in the top center, and his army is is monstrous. The quality of these heavy gas spellcasters is insane. Serral has been so efficient for these 26 minutes here in this game four. And this means that he is poised to overwhelm the Korean Zerg here. Maxed out, looking to get across the south side of the map. Rogue still has his base in the bottom right, but just mostly static defense here. Oh. And with Rogue losing so many Lurkers, how can he hold this position against Serral's army? He's out of position, and not only that, there's just too many units here for Serral. Serral's going to gain position on this base. If that base goes down, Rogue's economy is toast, and it falls. Serral not going to overcommit. He's going to fall back for now. He's still got the Vipers in the sky above this. And he gets oh. another snipe on the hatch doesn't even get the cancel. Serral feigning a retreat and then goes right back in and shuts it down one more time. Rogue so desperate for that gas income. Sub 300 gas here. His gas income is so low here. And there's just more oh. and more pickups there from Serral. Rogue running out of steam here. Serral just getting bigger and bigger as he starts to absorb this map. I mean, Rogue is one of the best late game players in the world. He has held that title for a long time, but it seems like today oh, the here blinding clouds. found Serral is the player who has just been more patient, stronger in the defense. His ability to catch these armies has been incredible. Rogue with a desperate counter attack is going to dive in and snipe some hatcheries. He can, but can he stop Serral's army if they go head to head? The Roach is getting a lot done here, even picking off a hatchery for the top left there from Serral. Lots of hatcheries dying. Those extra hit points on the hive, keeping it alive for now. These workers catching some hydras as well, which Rogue cannot afford to reinforce. Every single gas unit that Rogue loses is very hard for him to replenish. Serral is going to clean up Rogue, and I have a feeling he's going to get across the map and finish him off. Rogue here has very few tools left to work with. You know when you are 28 minutes into a Zerg versus Zerg, and you've got Zerglings that you're building. 
you are in trouble. Rogue, of course, with no gas, being forced into a desperate position. Building Zerglings with no attack upgrades to spend that gas bank, trying desperately to get his economy back up. But once again, Serral never going for one big punch, never overextending. He just pokes, he jabs, he works the body of his opponent. And we see that here, forcing the cancel on the south side again. He's got an army in the top, denying the top left expansion. Serral here, happy to be on less economy because he just doesn't lose his units. He's so much more efficient. At this point, he realizes Rogue is starving and he's willing to abduct even the smaller units like the Roaches and Hydralisks. It looked to be about eight hot Vipers versus zero pig. That is a dire situation if I've ever seen one here for Rogue but he knows he's on an elimination map, so he's still holding on, trying to do his best with what he has. He has nothing left to lose here, as he just tries to find the miracle engagement here on Serral. There's tons of Lings coming through here, and there aren't that many Lurkers, so maybe you can pick up some units here in the... But oh, this can Rogue callers. make this happen? And the Lurkers there are just so scary. There's no Vipers here. Rogue's going to try and dive, but look at that pullback. The Lurkers there, the Hydra's coming in as well. And these Lurkers are starting to get focused down. Rogue taking tons of splash damage. And it looks like he's going to isolate the sixth base of Serral. Serral finally losing this last Bastion of Economy. It's going to go down there. A Rogue finally does some damage. The Ling's going to swing in at the same time. He's looking for damage anywhere he can, and he finds a few Hydras. But Remember, these Zerglings don't have attack upgrades. They just don't do that much damage. And a couple of the Hydras save themselves, turning themselves into Lurker Cocoons. He goes for the main base. Rogue desperate here with whatever he has. Some Lurkers run in here from Serral to try and kill this base. It's very low in hit points, but it looks like they get deflected back for now. Yeah, good defense there by Rogue. Even here in a position where he has so <laughs> few tools left in his kit, he is able to just create little problems, but Serral never missing a beat. is able to defend. He's blocking everything left and right. There's still eight Vipers alive. Not many Lurkers left here for Serral. It's mostly Hydra Viper, but he doesn't really need anything else. With those Blinding Clouds above, this should be the army you need. Serral's up 30 supply. Blinding Clouds going down. And there we go, Rogue wants to take a find. He's got the Roach advantage. Serral! Serral's caught out of a position here. The Blinding Clouds, though, are massive. And they that army has are. to pull back. Rogue getting deflected. It seemed like he had the numbers there in that particular part of the map. But he is running out of steam physically and in game. Serral coming down to the south end here. Rogue scrambling his defenses. But there's just numbers here for the finish Zerg again. He comes through. He's been so patient, almost painfully patient. But that is getting to him towards this series win here going to just cut Rogue off from this hatchery for a free, easy base kill. He's just the perfect player. Serral here, never taking the risks on the offense. He's the best defensive player, the best late game player here in the Zerg Arsenal. He's showing such strong play. Rogue looking for angles. He keeps running into the wall that is Serral, but the Hydra's swinging in from two sides. Serral wrapping around that army. This Rogue. will be the last fight. Rogue is out. Serral! wins and gets himself a grand final appearance for the first time here at BlizzCon. The Serral versus Stats GSL versus the World Grand Final will be rematched here in Anaheim to see who is the greatest player of 2018. What a series, Pig. With a 3-1 score, I know, lads. We've seen the two best Zerg players in the world go head to head. And what a show it was, that last game really had it all. We got to see a masterful series of plays on both sides, but the defense in the end too strong. He's just a wall, he's a rock, he cannot be broken. Rogue through absolutely everything he had at him, but Serral's still the one standing on that stage right now. And he'll just have to have one more series to see if he can be the champion. But with for that, let's go to the stage with Smix and our semi-final winner, Serral. Serral, all eyes were on you in 2018. Four WCS titles, GSL versus the world, and now, for the first time ever, we have a non-Korean in the grand finals of the WCS Global Finals. Yeah, I know. It's incredible. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting this to come when I came here. So I know it's just incredible. And throughout this series, you were up against such a tough opponent. Talk to me about Lost and Found because there were a lot of scary moments in that game. It turned into a very long, close game. So at what point did you realize that you had done it? Mm, yeah, the game was pretty hard. I think, I think, I think <laughs> there was multiple nidus kind of I, I noticed him to move late and he got in so it was a bit hard occasionally but i mean 
in that kind of games, you kind of just know when you trade better that you're actually winning, and I felt like I was trading mainly better. I was killing all these wipers always, winning all the wiper battles, so I felt like I had a pretty good control of the goal game whole time, but I also knew that I was one bane base down pretty much the whole game, so I, I'm not sure, but I, I felt like I was in control. I'm very com comfortable in those games as well. Comfortable indeed. Calm, cool, and collected, and now you're headed to the Grand Finals. We've seen your ZVZ, and now it's time to show us your ZVP because you are going up against Stats. Now, the last time you played Stats, it was 4-3 in the Grand Finals of GSL vs. The World where you came out on top. Can we see a repeat? Yeah, sure. <laughs> There you have it, Cyril is moving forward to the Grand Finals. Congratulations once again, Calaris, back to you guys. This is the WCS Global Finals. Ladies and gentlemen out there around the world here at BlizzCon, it is a magical moment to say the least. The first time in eSports history for StarCraft II that a non-Korean has found their way into the Grand Finals. Final. I'm joined here by Nathanius, Tasteless, Todd. I think all of us here at the desk were having heart palpitations in that last game. I think, gentlemen, definitively, aside from the series as a whole, that last game, Tasteless, for me, was the best Zerg versus Zerg of all time. That was one of the best RTS games I've ever seen. I, I could not believe how well they were both playing. They had totally different approaches. You could see that Cyril really was focused on trying to trade as efficiently as possible to not overextend. And Rogue, he wanted to invest everything into that aggression to try to close it out. It was so good. It was it so was crazy. I am just blown away. These two players are just superhumans. Even being able to take a look in their first person point of view, that was so amazing. Every single time my jaw dropped, and they're just so impressive. Cyril, so patient throughout yeah. that last game, just kind of sitting back and Barely even looked nervous. Like he was, yeah. he was being sieged the whole game. Nidus's nonstop, just holds on against everything. And I love that we ended up this series with a really long game, oh, by the yeah. way. Yeah. These two, they're not just the best two Zergs in the world, they're the two best Zergs at the late game. And yeah. we finally got one of those really late game situations here in this mirror. And was it a show? I mean, Nathanius, I, I barely even remember the rest of the series because the last game was so good. It was amazing. I can't believe. Se I mean, Cyril's <laughs> control was just perfect. Every time you think he's getting caught, no, he's got something finishing up. He's got a flank coming in. He has an attack. The way he used those Overlord drops, like he was dropping Marines into his opponent's base, constantly hitting, constantly attacking, was insane. And to keep up that speed, especially in that lost and found game, for how much time yeah. you are constantly going that fast, to be able to keep up that pace, is insane. It is so difficult. It is so exhausting for the players. And he went the complete distance all the way till the final moments. This is some of the best StarCraft I've ever seen. Yeah, to be honest, we're going to have to go back and study that game. That oh, yeah. There were so oh, many yeah. things that happened there. <laughs> it is so hard to summarize, but oh my god. A hundred complex decisions had to be made on both oh, yeah. sides. You will never see a game that looks like that. Like, like close to that similar pattern yeah. a series again. It's a game that's going to be talked about for years to come, I'm yes. sure. But let's talk about the implications that this has now. Because Todd, Cyril is in the global finals. He's going up against Stats. And for all intents and purposes, this is unheard of in StarCraft, period. When it comes to how his road has been to that global finals here. Cyril, he could take it all. He has lost a single map. That's it. That was the only map that he's lost here in this yeah. tournament. He went through SOS, Zest, Dark, and now Rogue. Like, this is an insane road to the Grand Finals. And surely, after what we just saw, he has to be the favorite. Like, stats has looked good all the time. He's Mr. Super Solid, but Cyril is just, it feels like he's on another level. At the start of the year, we talked about how Cyril was a, a, such a scary player, you know? Yeah. And then he, he comes and he takes the first title, and then he gets the second. And all of a sudden, we're building up this thing where how can he compete against the Korean players, how, how about the rest of the world? And he's kept that promise that he's made that he's just gonna keep playing, he's not worried about anybody, and it's insane. Four WCS titles, GSL versus the world, and being in the grand finals at BlizzCon, what could possibly be a more insane achievement this year or, or ever for a non-Korean StarCraft player? Yeah, Nick? Look, when he won GSL versus the world, the number one search term, or search topic on Naver, which is the kind of like the Korean Google, yeah, yeah. was that match. Koreans were upset that they had been challenged. Koreans are used to being the very best at StarCraft. We've got a rematch here. 
Yep. And this is a lot of pressure on Staz. Korea wants him to win, but I don't know. I mean, Cyril's basically looking unstoppable. You know, everybody's been talking about that coming up showdown, potential showdown of Maru against Cyril. I feel like I don't even care about that anymore. <laughs> it's all about right. stats. Maru wasn't good enough to make it to the finals. He got taken out by SOS, who then got taken out in turn by stats. It's all about stats trying to take out the Cyril that just has looked borderline invincible. He finally bled in that last match, but it was just a single map. And once again, we're showing that the players that can play consistent, solid, adaptable StarCraft the best are the players that right. make it all the way to the end. And to me, that's just made watching these guys such a treat. I cannot wait for this.